What is up, bros and brats? I'm Ink Slasher, and today I'm going to explain to you what exactly divisions are and how they work compared to create a class. Now, unfortunately, I'm not actually at E3, which means I can't record any gameplay, which means I can't show you any gameplay because the people who go there actually sign NDA saying that they can show certain things, can't show certain things. I, of course, didn't sign one of those, but what I can do is take screenshots from certain people's videos and explain them. And I found two people's different videos that actually showed the create a class menu, and I think this is pretty much the most asked question right now is how exactly does this work because a lot of people are thinking it works like battlefield a lot of people are thinking it still works like call of duty and to me it pretty much looks identical to create a class with a few little changes and i want to explain that to you so this first screen we're looking at here is very clearly from charlie intel and you can see down the left hand side there's your different classes now of course it doesn't say their classes it says their divisions but let's be honest looking at them their classes. So based on what some of the YouTubers said and based on what Michael Condry said at his like little press conference that he had alone today, the create a class or create a division was not available at E3. So these were all preset classes that they could choose from at E3. So as you can see down the left hand side, there is two classes for each division, infantry, airborne, armored, mountain, and expeditionary. So based off of your division, there is three things that you can choose solely for that division, your division skill, your division training, and finally your primary weapon. So for example, the infantry division, generally speaking, uses assault rifle-like weapons. The airborne division, SMGs, the mountain division, sniper rifles, so on and so forth. So I actually have four classes that we can go through and look at the different skills and training and weapons. Um, now, they're perks, right? Like, I feel weird calling them training. To me, they're still perks. But let's go through these classes and actually look at the different things. So the first thing, this is Infantry 1 class. It has Bayonet Charge, Infantryman 3, and finally Steady. So Bayonet Charge is basically something, if you hold R3, you can run with a bayonet and stab someone. This is something we saw in Battlefield 1. Um, not too different there. Now, Michael Condry said in his interview that only infantrymen will be able to do that. The second skill is Infantryman 3. So this one says two extra attachments on your primary weapon and one extra attachment on your secondary weapon. Now another thing that they did say in the interview is that you are able to level up your division training. So for example, for Infantryman 4, once you level it up maybe one more time, you may be able to use three extra attachments on your primary weapon and two attachments on your secondary weapon. I don't know if that's actually what it is. It might add a whole other skill altogether. Maybe you can use two grenades. The point I'm saying is you are able to level up those skills. The next thing is basic training. So this one is steady, immune to shell shock and tactical equipment, and sprint for longer distances. This is something we're going to see pretty consistently, the sprint for longer distances thing. And I'm pretty sure about this, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that the basic training traits are available for every single division. So the division skill and the division training are specific per division, but basic training can be used on any single division on any single class. As far as the weapons go on this class, we got the M1 Grand with high caliber, weapon grip, advanced rifling, quick draw. We got the 1911 with extended mag, and we got the Mark two fragmentation grenades so the only thing i want to point out about this is with the one perk he gets two extra attachments that means normally you are able to run two attachments on your primary weapon the next class we got here is for infantry two and it's kind of similar to the first one your division skill is still bayonet charge your division training is still infantryman three but the difference is, is this one has Hunker as your basic training instead of Steady. Now, Hunker says reveals enemy equipment. So, in other words, if they put a Bouncing Betty down, yes, you didn't hear me wrong, Bouncing Betty instead of a Claymore, if they put that down, it'll kind of show you where that is. And it also says take less explosive damage. So, the thing I want to point out here is that perks in this game don't do one thing. They do multiple things. So, for example, in Black Ops 3, Hunker would be two perks. It would be Flak Jacket and it would be engineer because engineer reveals enemy equipment and flak jacket takes less explosive damage now the question is is this a good thing is this a bad thing it's going to make making classes a little bit easier there's going to be a little less customization but at the same time it's going to be way easier for sledgehammer to actually make this balanced and make it a little bit more competitive which has its positives and has its negatives and as far as weapons we got the bar with a nidar sight weapon grip advanced rifling and quick draw i'm not totally sure 
what the NIDAR site is, but when you see it in game, it looks very similar to an Aperture site from Call of Duty World at War. There's also the Luger with advanced rifling, and finally the M18 smoke grenade. And let me tell you, based on the gameplay, the M18 smoke grenades are so strong. Like, you cannot see through that smoke whatsoever. Up next, we got the Airborne 1 class. Now, this one has the M1928, and if you're wondering what that is, that's a Thompson SMG. And I think I'm going to do a series coming up in the future where we go through and actually look at all of the weapons that we know are in Call of Duty World War II so far, go over, like, the historical accuracy of them, how they were used in World War II, and all of that kind of stuff. But that will be done in the future. As far as this class, though, we got Suppressor. Hides muzzle flash and prevents gunfire from appearing on enemy mini-maps. And you can toggle this on and off by pressing left on the D-pad. This is huge, so Suppressor is no longer an attachment for a weapon, it's a division skill, something that can only be used on certain divisions. I actually think this is an excellent, excellent thing for the game. Up next we got Pathfinder 3. This has Sprint for Longer Distances, increased sprint speed and climb over obstacles faster so in other call of duty games we've seen this perk as lightweight and lightweight pro and finally for basic training we have smoked extra piece of lethal equipment and smoke grenades as tactical equipment and finally, we have the Airborne 2 class. Once again, this one has Suppressor with Pathfinder 3. The difference is the basic training, which again, I think can be used on any single division on any single class. This one has Quieter Movement, aka Dead Silence, Take No Fall Damage, and finally, Invisible to Enemy Recon Aircraft While Moving. So what does that mean? That is basically Ghost from Black Ops 3. So while you're moving, you will not show up on the UAV if they have a UAV up. If you're standing still or camping, you will show up. This is incredibly important, especially with the boots on the ground movement. This is going to try to eliminate campers because they can't sit in one spot and just wait for the enemy. Up next, this is an interesting part. We got the SMG, we got the MP40 with quick draw and advanced rifling, but our secondary weapon here is no longer a pistol. It's a melee weapon. So yes, melee weapons are back. You can put them as your secondary weapon, just like you could in Black Ops 3. And finally, as far as the equipment goes, we got the sticky grenade, and I actually have no idea how you say that properly. It looks to me like North 74th Street, but I have no idea if that's actually how you say it. So to end this off, I just wanted to compare what is different with this compared to normal create a class mode. So first of all, your division skill, it appears like that's a skill you can activate in game. For example, the bayonet charge, you hold R3, you charge. In airborne, you press left on the D-pad and you can toggle whether you have a suppressor or not. Your division training. Your division training is specific to your division and it has certain things. For example, like sprinting for longer distance or increased sprint speed. Your basic training is essentially your perks from any other creator class. For example, the airborne division, the Phantom, has three perks. Quieter movement, take no fall damage, and visible on enemy recon pretty self-explanatory. And finally, the last thing that's different is your primary weapons are decided by what division you are playing as. Infantry's rifles, airborne's SMGs, armors is LMGs, mountainous sniper rifles, and finally, expeditionary, I believe, is shotguns. The question is, is this good for Call of Duty? Is this bad for Call of Duty? And I don't think it's either. I think it's different, which is a good thing. Change in Call of Duty is a good thing. It keeps it interesting. It keeps people involved. And I think that is something we need to see a little bit more in Call of Duty. And I'm glad that they're taking a risk here. Create a class is still here. It's just different in Call of Duty World War II. But next, I want to hear what you guys think. Do you like this? Do you hate this? Do you think they're copying Battlefield 1? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, it'd be fantastic if you could hit that like rating. And if you're new to the channel and like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button as I upload new Call of Duty videos every single day of the week. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out.